now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Another show that you helped us acquire, Casey Crime Photographer. As it was originally broadcast 75 years ago today, October 9th, 1947, and the wedding breakfast. And we thank you for tuning in on this Sunday. This is the ninth day of October, 282nd day of the year, 83 days left until we get to 2023. The founder of Rhode Island, Roger Williams, banished from Massachusetts Bay Colony as a religious dissident after he spoke out against punishments for religious offenses and giving away Native American land. The Collegiate School of Connecticut chartered on this date on, in 1701 in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. It's now known as Yale University. Father Franci- Francisco Palio founded Mission San Francisco de Assis in 1776. Of course, it's now San Francisco. The Great Chicago Fire brought under control on this date in 1871. The Washington Monument opened on this date in 1888. The generators at Boulder Dam began to transmit electricity from the Colorado River to Los Angeles in 1936. You know it today as Hoover Dam. In Chicago on this date in 1969, National Guard called in for crowd control as demonstrations continued in connection to the trial of the Chicago 8 in Chicago in 1969. District Court Judge Harry E. Claiborne became the fifth federal official to be removed from office through impeachment in 1986. An official news agency, TASS, in the Soviet Union reported on this date in 1989 the landing of a UFO in Vorznes. Top Voronish researchers of anomalous phenomena who uh, include scientists, geologists, and uh, also some military people went to the site immediately thereafter they were on the site on the 3rd of October studying and collecting specimens they had the chance to talk to many eyewitnesses adults as well as kids uh, policemen school teachers uh, students scientists who had uh, witnessed similar or even differently shaped UFOs the underlying theme was that giant like beings exited from strange looking craft did some research throughout Voronish and were able to get back to their craft and fly away Ukrainian journalist Paul Stone held cameras that might have taken pictures of the event confiscated by Russian authorities now on this date in 1992 A 13-kilogram meteorite landed in the driveway of the Knapp residence in Peekskill, New York. That was in 1992. It destroyed the family's 1980 Chevy Malibu. An Amtrak Sunset Limited train derailed on this date in 1995 by saboteurs near Palo Verde, Arizona. Whoever did this knew something about trains. And uh, we believe it's a terrorist action as uh, evidenced by the evidence we found at the scene. But- now, typewritten notes with anti-government messages signed Son of Gestapo found near the crash site. The derailment remains unsolved. North Korea tested its first nuclear device on this date in 2006, and it was in 2016 the presidential debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton got a bit heated. You know, it is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. We want to remind the audience to please not uh, talk out loud. Please do not applaud. You're just wasting time. And, and- Trump's over-the-top responses in the debate put him over the top in the election. Passing away on this date in history, Saturday Night Live alumnus Jan Hooks, singer-actress Helen Morgan, 
Pope Pius XII, Claire Booth Luce, the diplomat, theater critic Walter Kerr, TV personality Dagmar, and Louis Nye. There's a uh, familiar face, of course, and your name is Gordon Hathaway, and I'm from Manhattan, and I'm Madison Avenue's answer to Baby Doll. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I'm glad to see you happy tonight, Gordon. Are you ready for tonight's question about movies? Uh, the cinema mm-hmm. I ought to be in pictures. I'm wonderful to see. And if I were in pictures, I just watch me. I've got to record. Ah, the very, very funny Louis Nye, Louis Nye passing away on this date back in 2005. This is the birth date of composer Camille Sanson, also Amy Semple McPherson, the evangelist, Scottish actor Alastair Sim, Watergate co-conspirator E. Howard Hunt, also John Lennon, and pro wrestler Eddie Guerrero. The man behind Dr. My Eyes and Anything. And she's got to be somebody's baby tonight. Jackson Brown, 74 today. Ozzy Osbourne's lovely wife, Sharon, is 70 today. From Monk and Wings, the very funny Tony Shaloub is 69. From the original Quantum Leap and then Star Trek Enterprise, Scott Bakula, 68, also 68. From Family Feud and Seinfeld, John O'Hurley, also 68. Uh, Stevie Richards from uh, ECW fame is 51 today. The original host and creator of Blue's Clues, Steve Burns, 49. The son of John Lennon, Sean Lennon, 47 today. From Home Improvement, Zachary Ty Bryant is 41. And from Everybody Hates Chris, Tyler James Williams is 30. Those just a few of the people who celebrate the ninth day of October as their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And we go back on this Sunday, three quarters of a century, to October 9th, 1947, Stotts Cotsworth as Casey Crime Photographer. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, right here on your favorite radio station. You know, it's true. Difficult times have a way of focusing us. We have to think about what matters most when it comes to our spending, our health care, No doubt. This is why so many people are joining MediShare right now. MediShare is a trusted way to save up to 50% on your monthly healthcare costs. More than 400,000 people have already made the switch. It's pretty obvious why, too, especially now during this challenging season with healthcare costs and out-of-pocket expenses going up. MediShare can save you a lot of money. The typical family saves $500 a month. And MediShare is a Christian healthcare sharing ministry that's worked beautifully for 29 years. There are different options to choose from to fit your budget. I'll give you the number here in a second. And if you call, you can get a price within two minutes. Maybe now is the perfect time to make the switch and start saving. Here you go. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox here on your favorite radio station. We have talked about at ClassicRadio.stream, the uh, Buy Me a Coffee function. We have gotten a pretty nice collection of Stotts Cotsworth as Casey Crime Photographer, and we'll be bringing those to you. This one from 75 years ago, October 9th, 1947. This episode entitled The Wedding Breakfast. The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation... Brings you Crime Photographer. Today is the anniversary of the great Chicago fire. The one that was started by Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Yeah, Mrs. O'Leary's cow. See, everybody knows her name, but who knows the cow's name? 
That should be a famous name, too. Maybe Tony knows. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas, but that's one famous name I don't know. But I do know that Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in class. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Wedding Breakfast. Five o'clock in the morning, a dull and dreary five o'clock. In the big morning express building, an elevator halts at the floor of the photography department, and... Get out here with me, Annie. Oh, I've got a report up the city room, Casey. Oh, and if you do, the boss is liable to stock you with another assignment before you've got time to recover from the one we just had. Come on, Annie. Okay. <sighs> I need a breather. Yeah, me too. I'll hand in the pictures I got for developing. We'll hop out and grab a cup of coffee. Two or three cups. Wrong. Yeah, let me get that door for you. Oh, thanks. Hi, right, Casey. Hi. Huh? Morning, William. Oh, there's been nothing good about this morning, Pollock. You two look kind of beat up. Well, if you've seen four dead bodies spread over the pavement in action like we've just seen, you'd look beat up, too. I hear the films I exposed, Pollock. They're not pretty. Run them through the developer, will you? Okay. My desk phone. Probably the guy who's been trying to get you ever since you went on that accident what, thing. Why, somebody's been calling me? He gave his name as Jimmy Hackett. Wouldn't say what he wanted you for. I don't know any Jimmy Hackett. Hello, Casey speaking. Oh, finally I get you. This is Jimmy the Hacky, Casey. Jimmy who? The Hacky. You know, the cab driver you got out of a jam when them cops... Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, Casey. When a guy does me a favor, I ain't happy till I can do something for him. Now I got what I think is an exclusive story for you. Okay, hey, shoot it, pal. You know Sylvia Loomis, the multi-million heiress? Well, I know of her. Yeah. You know anything about a party named Duke Pavel? He's got fancy Marcel hair and he don't talk good American like you and me. Baron Rennie Du Pavel? Yeah, that's the guy. Oh, well, what about uh, He and this Loomis chicken got married tonight. What? This is straight good, Casey. Hey, listen to this, Annie, will you? Go ahead, Jimmy, go oh, ahead. Uh, about 3 this a.m., I pick up three couples outside the club Taz Bar. Yeah? They, they told me to drive to Fieldson just over the state line. To get a justice and a piece out of bed, and one of the couples gets married. What do you well, know? from talk I heard, it seems they get a license last week sometime. But the girl had started to welch on the ball and chain idea. That this, uh, that Duke Pavel and his friends better quite a few drinks at the cab bar tonight and talked her into going through with it. Well, it was only during the drive back to the guy's apartment that I get wise to who the newly went to us. You'll be a Loomis and Baron ready to Pavel. Huh? That's right. I took them and their friends to Duke Pavel's apartment, the Wilshire Manor. They, they plan to have more drinks there and a wedding breakfast. This hot news for you, Casey. It's plenty hot, Jimmy, and thanks a million. Uh, don't thank me. I'm still thanking you for getting me out of that jam. Right, so Goodbye. Right. Goodbye, Casey. You heard that, Annie? Oh, this is front page stuff, Casey. Sylvia Loomis is one of the richest gals in the world. And the guy Jimmy says she's married is an A1 rat, Annie. Mm. Travel's never done a decent day's work in his life. Uh, but what a handsome hunk of man he is. Uh, oh. Hey, that Loomis girl. She was in case of Artie Mason. I wonder what... Hmm. Hey, well, come on. That wedding breakfast ought to be starting about now. Let's get up to city desk. Lay our tip on the line, then go to Pavel's apartment for confirmation. Okay, huh? a simple social assignment like this will be a welcome relief, Casey, after that accident job we just finished. Ooh, we got a lucky break, Casey. Yeah. If that elevator man hadn't been enjoying a nap, we'd never have gotten up here to do Pavel's apartment unannounced. Not in a swanky joint like this. Oh, did you press the third floor button? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, according to the directory downstairs, his apartment is 3D. Oh, here's 3A. D ought to be that door at the end of this hall here. Yeah. Hey, look. A woman's coming out of there. Well, she's in a big hurry. She's running down the stairs. Yeah. As though something was after her. Huh. I think she's going away so fast because she just had an unpleasant surprise, Annie. What do you mean? I recognize that day, man. That's Mrs. Fred Gardner. The Mrs. Fred Gardner? Mm -hmm, the. According to gossip, she's been one of the Pavel's gal friends. It must have shocked her to meet his brand new bride. Oh, the meeting must have been a shock to everyone concerned. Huh. I don't hear any sound in there of what is laughingly called merriment. Now, wait, I'll ring the bell. 
The door's partly open, Casey. Yeah. There's a sound from inside. Huh? No one answers your ring. Let's have a look inside, huh? The living room's empty. Well, there's been a party in there. Eyeball glasses all around. Maybe everybody went out for that wedding. Annie, wedding. come in. Let me huh? close this door. Have a look around. Hey, Casey, we have no right we'll to... We'll take the right. Mrs. Gardner had a reason to run out of here the way she did, Annie. Hey. Look, look at this. What? Pieces of the marriage certificate. What it looks like. Well, somebody tore it to bits. Stick again in that next room. Looks like a library. <gasps> He's Holy smokes. That man on the floor. That's Dupavio. His skull's been crushed in there. He's dead. That body's still warm. Hey, the woman we saw leave here, Mrs. Gardner, she's the Shh, one. Shh, quiet. Huh? Listen. Someone's in this room. Here the guy is, on the floor behind the sofa. Hey, it's Artie Mason. He's asleep. He's probably drunk. That statuette beside his hand. There's blood on it, Casey. Fresh blood, Annie. This bronze statuette is what killed Dupavio. Then Mason must have done it. He was crazy about Sylvia Loomis. He found out she'd married this gigolo. He came up uh, here Don't go too and... fast, Annie. Don't forget Mrs. Gardner. And don't forget the bride. Sylvia, yeah. Hey, come on back to the library. There must be a phone in there, and I'll call City Dick. Give the cops a ring afterward. They may be interested. Well, just as soon as I get my story in. Oh, there's the phone. Uh-oh. We won't call on that. Oh, the wire's been yanked Find out. a telephone outside, Annie. Oh, All right. You? I'll take the car and find a phone and come back here with a cop. Right. While you're doing that, I'll make with a camera here. Okay, I'm on my way. All right, I'll lock the door behind you. Nobody else can walk in like we did. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can and, and ring the bell. All right, so long. <clears throat> what a beautiful front page picture this is going to make. Ah, another shot of the dead man from another angle. Huh? He made a quick trip. Just a second, Annie. I'll let you in. What? Who are you? Who are you? Larkin's the name. I want to see De Pavel. He isn't here. He'd better be here and he'd better see me. Out of my way. Wait fella. a minute. I, I said out of my I don't way. Like being pushed around like that, mister. That's too bad. Tough, huh? Plenty. Now go tell De Pavel I'm here for the stuff he promised. What stuff? He knows. Just tell him Horseshoe Larkin's here. Oh, I've heard of you. You're one of the gambling racket guys I never ran into before. On your way. Get to Pavel. I'll take you to the paddle. Step into the library here. Okay. There he is. What? I'm afraid he isn't going to give you the stuff he promised. When did this happen? Not very long ago. Did you? No. I didn't kill it. Maybe the guy over here did. Artie Mason. You know Mason? Yeah. He's drunk. Passed out. It kind of looks that way. How do you fit into this? I just happened to be waiting for a bus that runs right through here. Cut the comedy. You a cop? Yes. I get you now. That camera, you're a press photographer. You got me, yeah. Casey's the name. Uh, that, uh, picture's hanging crooked on the wall. Don't touch that. Don't touch anything before the cops get here. How long you been alone here? Ten, fifteen minutes. Why did you want to straighten that picture? Habit. I can't stand seeing things crooked. <laughs> That's coming from you as the makings of a joke. Yeah. You think Artie Mason bumped off to Pebble? I'm keeping an open mind. You sent for the cops, of course. Yeah. I'll wait for them. I'm interested in what they'll have to say. Yeah, and they'll be interested in what you'll have to say. Mister, I've got an alibi. Shh, quiet. Huh? I heard something like a door. Somebody else in the joint? In the kitchen. I'm going out. I'm coming with you. Who are you and what are you doing here? I beg your pardon. You heard me. Oh, I know this guy, Casey. His name's Waldo. He's de Pavel's servant. I'm Baron de Pavel's man, Mr. Larkin. How did you get in here? When? I left myself in the service door there just a few moments Reporting ago. Morning for work? Yes, sir. Isn't this kind of early? Well, the Baron telephoned me about an hour ago and said he wished me to prepare a special breakfast. Oh, yeah, that checks. If you permit me, sir. Who are you, and why do you question me? Step into the library, and I'll show you why. Well, well, just a moment while I replace this dish of dog food in the refrigerator. I've just taken it out with Dog you. food? For the Baron Spaniel. I haven't seen any Spaniel. Oh, he's there in the butler's pantry, sir. Uh, oh, yeah, I see. 
He's the world's lousiest watchdog. Hadn't been a yap out of him. He's very old and sick. Yeah, he looks it. Come on in the library. Don't touch anything. Don't touch That's anything. That's the reason why. The barony? Oh, what has happened? Kind of plain, isn't it, Waldo? Is, is he dead? Completely. There's the guy behind the couch. You finished him off. Mr. Mason. You know him, huh? He came here last week, and he threatened the Baron. Threatened him? Yes, sir. I heard him say that if, if Baron Dupaville didn't keep away from Miss Loomis, he, he, he'd kill him. That does it, Casey. Mason's the killer. Doesn't sound too good for the guy, Larkin, but I'm still keeping an open mind. Answer that doorbell, will you, Waldo? Yes, sir. I think a lady rang it with some cops. <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. Casey Crime Photographer started out in 1943 as Flash Gun Casey. In 1944, it became Casey Press Photographer. In 1945, Crime Photographer, which basically was the way the show was built until its conclusion in 1945. And yes, it was also on television. From uh, sept- from October 9th, 1947, Casey Crime Photographer on Classic Radio Theater. Thanks for spending part of your Sunday with us here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We're listening to an episode of Casey Crime Photographer as it was originally broadcast on Thursday, October 9th, 1947 at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. In the newspapers of that Thursday, 75 years ago, these were some of the headlines. The United Nations Political Committee voted last night to establish a permanent U.N. commission to patrol the Balkans. The vote, 34 to 6, 9 abstentions, came on the key section of an American resolution. The committee, however, decided to temporarily delay the vote on another section, which would blame Yugoslavia, Albania, and Bulgaria for aggression against Greece. A four-engine American Airlines flagship went momentarily out of control yesterday and flew upside down over El Paso, striking terror in 48 passengers and inflicting what were described as minor injuries on six. Captain Charles Sisto, veteran American Airlines pilot, managed to right the airliner and landed it safely at the El Paso Municipal Airport minutes later. U.S. Attorney Everett Grantham disclosed yesterday that two former G.I.s have been arrested and arraigned on federal charges of stealing highly secret photographic data from the nearby Los Alamos atomic bomb project. Both men were stationed during the war at Los Alamos as Army photographers. Grantham announced that one pled innocent to one charge and guilty to a second when arraigned at Los Alamos yesterday before a U.S. commissioner. Joseph A. Padway, general counsel of the American Federation of Labor, died of a stroke last night a few hours after collapsing during an address before the AFL's international convention. The 56-year-old labor lawyer had just begun an attack on the Taft-Hartley law. When he falters, his notes dropping from his fingers, he groped for a glass of water and knocked it over. He was half carried from the platform and taken to Stanford Hospital, where he died. Washington florists report yesterday a severe flower shortage has caused them to ration floral displays for weddings and funerals and has sent wholesale prices soaring. They described the shortage as nationwide and said it is the worst in memory. A high French official said last night that France is facing a very tragic moment and will exhaust all her dollar resources within a week unless outside aid is forthcoming. France's Director of Economic Affairs, Harvey Alfant, told newsmen that without help, France will have to discontinue all purchases of American wheat, coal, and fats around October 15th. And if American wheat supplies are shut off, he said, the French people as a whole will go without bread more than two days a week. This will be an eggless, poultryless Thursday under the voluntary rationing plan, which makes it a good time to look into the eating habits of the hen. 
Arthur Edson, writing for Associated Press, says anyone who's ever been around one knows two obvious chicken facts. One, a hen is always stupid and a hen is always hungry. Fortunately, this is not the time nor the place to start an argument over a hen's IQ. And though some of the day's top news stories is reported in the newspapers of Thursday, October 9th, 1947. On your radio, Casey Crime Photographer. We'll hear the conclusion of this episode following these important messages on this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. We'll start off Monday's Classic Radio Theater, start of a brand new week, with an episode of the Jack Benny Show, or I should say the Jello Show starring Jack Benny, from 79 years ago, October 10th, 1943, in the middle of World War II. Jack comes back from Africa, the first show of the season. Jack has just returned from a USO tour of North Africa, and of course, being in New York City, is staying at his favorite haunt there, the Acme Plaza Hotel. (laughs) That's Monday's Classic Radio Theater, but now the conclusion of Casey Crime Photographer starring Stott Scottworth, a series of shows that you helped us acquire uh, from 75 years ago, October 9th, 1947. Captain Logan, how long will it take to sober Mason up? Well, the doc says it'll be hours before he can tell a coherent story, Miss Williams. The guy really had a skinful, Logan. I'll say. Well, he probably didn't know what he was doing when he killed you, Pegville. He knew what he was doing a week ago when he threatened to kill him. I want to know just how Mrs. Gardner fits into this picture. What made the bride do a fade out? What happened to the four wedding guests that were here? So huh? I want to know all about that, Casey, and my men are working on those angles right now. I also want to know more about Horseshoe Larkin's part in this thing. I put him in that ballot under guard one of the bedrooms. Come on. Captain Logan. Yes, yeah, Sergeant? We just found a wall safe in that library, and it's unlocked. Wall safe? There it is, sir. That picture was hanging in front of it. The door was open about a quarter of an inch. And what'd you find inside? Nothing, sir. Nothing? That picture hung over the safe. Logan, let's have a talk with Larkin. Okay. He's in here with the ballot. So you're finally getting around to us, Captain. Around to you, Larkin. Waldo, go into the living room with this officer. Please, Captain, may I go to the kitchen? I I haven't fed the Baron's poor dog yet. The old fellow's very weak. Okay, feed the pooch. Thank you, sir. Well, what do you want from me, Captain? The straight story of why you came here, Larkin. And tell the truth, because I'll check every word you say. Okay. De Pavel dropped 50 grand to me in a stud game. Here's his IOUs to prove it. I let him stall long enough. So I told him I wanted my dough right away. Or else. Or else meaning he'd be beaten up or bumped off. Why, Captain, how you talk. I simply told the guy he'd lose my friendship. Go on. He called me up yesterday and asked would I accept a pearl necklace as a pledge until he could redeem it for cash. A pearl necklace? Yeah, he said it was worth 75 G's. I said it was a deal and I'd be here for it this morning. I came here and you know the rest. Did he tell you where he was getting that pearl necklace? I don't ask guys personal questions like that. And he said he had the necklace. Captain, have you cops come across it? There's no pearl necklace here. Of course, you took a look in his wall safe. You know he had a wall safe? Sure, I saw him get dough out of it to pay other debts he owed me. You wanted to straighten that picture a while ago because you were interested in the safe behind it. Huh? That's right, Casey. But I guess the Pavel was lying to me about having him. And I lose 50 grand. I can't collect from him now. You've told a fairly smart story, Larkin. It makes you seem to have had an interest in keeping the Pavel alive. And we'll check plenty on you just the same, Larkin. Sergeant... Yes, Captain. I want you to search this man thoroughly. Then give that ballot Waldo the same kind of going over. I want their home search, too. There's a possibility that a pearl necklace may have been taken from that safe. Come on, Miss Williams, Casey. Captain, just a minute. Now, what is it, Sergeant? The boys have located both Sylvia Loomis and Mrs. Gardner. Where are they? The Loomis girl is in St. Anne's Hospital. She swallowed poison. Poison? Yeah. But the doc's got her in time to save her. Has she been able to talk? No, sir, and won't be able for a while. That's just swell. First Mason and now... 
Is Mrs. Gardner in the hospital, too? No, sir. She's been taken to headquarters. Now, at least I'll have a chance to question one suspect besides Larkin. Now, if you and Miss Williams want to hear what the lady has to say, Casey, come on. <laughs> Believe me, Captain. René Dupavi was dead when I came into his apartment this morning. I swear he was. All right, now just take it easy, Mrs. Gardner, and start from the beginning. You've been seen a lot with Pavel. You were infatuated with him, weren't you? Yes. Is that all? I. I've been keeping René supplied with money. Oh. Several days ago, he told me he. Oh, the gambling debt to a man who might... might kill him if the debt wasn't paid. Did the debt amount to $50,000? Yes. I didn't have that much cash, but I had a valuable pearl necklace. I gave it to Rene yesterday. A pearl necklace worth $75,000, say? Yes. But last night I... I learned that Rene and Sylvia Lewis were going to be... <laughs> You went to Dupavo's apartment to have a showdown with the uh, gentleman. Yes. You were pretty sore at him, huh? I had a right to be Mr. Casey. He made a fool out of me only a few hours before he'd made love to me. That gives me my neck. You found him apparently alone in his apartment. You picked up that bronze statuette and you hit him over the head. No. No. He was dead when I got there. Huh? Who let you in his place? Yeah, tell me that, Mrs. Gardner. I had a key to his apartment. Here it is. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, what'd you do after you saw the Pavel's dead body? I rushed out of the place. These newspaper people saw me leave. Mrs. Gardner, did you recover your necklace before you left? Can you believe I'd even think of the necklace after I saw Rene lying in his own blood, Mr. Case? Uh, Lieutenant, you take over. If she changes her story in any vital detail, let me know. I'll talk to you later, Mrs. Gardner. Come on, Miss Williams, Casey. My guy should have rounded up the rest of the suspects by now. Here's your fears, folks. Thanks. Say, uh, you two sure look tired. I feel all beat up, pal. Oh, I'll say we do. It's almost midnight, Ethelbert, and we started on this case at five this morning. Anything new on it? Mason finally talked. So did Sylvia Loomis. And the wedding guests told their story. What'd they say? Mm, well, it boils down to this, Ethelbert. Huh? By the time the wedding party <clears throat> reached to Pavel's place, it all sobered up a bit and they were all tired. Mm -hmm. After Pavel telephoned this guy... Waldo to come in and whip up a breakfast. The guests all reneged on the whole idea and decided to go home, which they did. And according to Sylvia, she and DePavel were only alone about ten minutes when Mason appeared. Yeah, lit to the eyes, too. Someone had tipped him off about the marriage, and he spilled DePavel's setup with Mrs. Gardner to Sylvia, the new bride. And when she learned that her new husband had been palsy wowsy with Mrs. Gardner only a few hours before the wedding, she blew up and tore up her marriage certificate and, well, this is her story, ran out of the place, went home, and swallowed poison. She left Mason alone with Dupaville? Yeah. So she says. She also says Mason had passed out cold by that time. Sylvia may have done it while Mason was blacked out. Mason may have snapped out of his blackout after she left and done it. Or Mrs. Gardner may have done it. Gee, who done it? Well, you give us the answer, pal. How about Horseshoe Lark? No, his alibi stood up 100%. And the pearl necklace is completely disappeared. Oh, let's forget it, Annie. I'm going to fall asleep on my feet if I don't go home and hit the feathers. Come on, baby. Oh, I'm more than willing. Good night, Ethelbert. Here's the beers, pal. So long, kid. Good night. Hello, Casey. Huh? Lock. I've been waiting for you quite a while. You ought to have a better lock on your door. It was a cinch to slip it. What's the big idea? I want the pearl necklace. And you've got it nuts. Uh-uh. Hand it over, fella. 
and you won't have to worry about this gun in my mitt. I may even slip you a grand or two. I guess I'm dumb, Larkin. I don't get it. To save argument, I'll tell you how I got the goods on you. Yeah, that I'd like to hear. Well, you see, I happened to have phoned to Pavel between the time the Loomis chick left and the gardener dame blew in and out. And he answered the phone. He was alive. Yeah. Which means Mason killed him. But Mason didn't take the necklace. He was searched. I was searched. Waldo was searched. But you weren't searched, Casey. I see. I want those pearls, Casey. Gimme. You said something about uh, slipping me a few grand, Larkin. I meant it. I'm not a hog. Whatever they bring over 50, I'll split with you. It's a fair offer. Uh, live and let live, I always say. When it's possible to let live. What? 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 Make sure it's possible, I'll take that gun, you dirty double-crosser. Uh. I came home to get some rest. Police headquarters. Give me Captain Logan if he's still around, will you? Just a minute. Why did I go into the newspaper business? Logan speaking. This is Casey. So what do you want? Whatever it is, the answer is no. I'm just leaving for home and some rest. Forget it, forget it. And meet me at the Pavel's apartment as soon as you can get there. What for? To find those missing pearls and get a murderer. Huh? Yes, and incidentally, send a cop to my joint for a guy I envy. What are you talking about? Larkin is asleep on my living room floor, pal. Sleeping. Doorbell, Logan. Sergeant Flanagan will answer. Oh, you're back, Waldo. Thank you for letting me in once more, Sergeant. How is the poor old dog? He was asleep last time I looked at him. May I see him? Sure. I'm greatly attached to him. He, he belonged to the Baron, but he was really mad. Oh, Captain Logan and Mr. Casey. Hello, Aldo. Hi, fella. Just looking over your kitchen again. I, I've come to see the dog. I'm worried you about him. You've been here before tonight? Yes, the poor old fellow is so weak. If he isn't looked after... Look him. after him, Aldo. Thank you, sir. Oh, he's still and cold. I think he's dead. Really? Poor old fellow. The spaniel's dead, all right, Logan. Yeah, too bad. Gentlemen, perhaps I'm unduly sentimental, but may I take him with me and bury him decently? Why, certainly, Waldo. Thank you, Captain. After an autopsy is performed? Autopsy? It's a rule where a crime has been committed. I I never heard of that rule. Oh, very well, gentlemen. I'll call for his body later. Good night. You're not leaving, Waldo. Not until you talk. Waldo, what's the meaning of this, I... Let me go. Talk, Waldo. Talk. I, I don't know what you mean. You came into this apartment by the service entrance as Sylvia Loomis was telling Du Pavel off. You saw your chance and made your plan. You hit Du Pavel with that statuette, thinking Mason would be blamed. You just gotten the necklace when Mrs. Gardner let herself in. You hid in that butler's pantry. When Miss Williams and I came in, you were stuck there, right? The old dog offered you an out, you thought. You mixed the pearls in the ground meat prepared for that spaniel. You fed it to him right under our noses. After putting in some roach poison, you had in his kitchen. And then you posed as a dog lover while waiting for him to die so he could walk out with his body and the pearls. Right, Waldo? Yes. It was just as you say. Take me to jail, gentlemen. I'm very tired. You're tired? Yeah. Are we tired? <laughs> The most famous name in glass. Well, so you finally got a good sleep, Casey, huh? Ah, uh, swell, Ethelbert. I feel like a million bucks today. Oh, if we could only spend the kind of money we sometimes feel like. Ah, oh, no, you want to hoard that kind, Annie. Look at Artie Mason, Sylvia Loomis, Mrs. Gardner. Oh, well, phooey. Let's forget about the de Pavel case. Well, just to change the subject, Ethelbert, mm -hmm. what do you think of the new styles for women? Well, Miss Williams, as my sister Edna says, quote, it don't matter how women's fashions change because their designs always remain the same. Uh, unquote. <laughs> You get it? Designs, Casey. <laughs> Designs. <laughs> you better change the subject again, Annie. Definitely, Casey. Prime 
cinematographer starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. is directed by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. There you have it. Thank you so much for contributing to Get These Shows for Us. October 9th, 1947, 75 years ago, Casey Crime Photographer on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Remember, uh, you miss a day, you don't have to miss a single show. All 21 hours of Classic Radio Theater each and every week are at ClassicRadio.stream. Stream our shows on demand. Learn more about Classic Radio Collecting. You can find our social media links. You can find podcast information there as well. And uh, you can contact me. And you can also buy me a coffee. That buy me a coffee money is what helps us acquire series like uh, Casey Crime Photographer. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please thank this station and support their advertisers. And have a great week ahead. And tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite station.